welcome to Orion Today. I'm Joe Johnson, and once again, I'm joined by Penny Schultz. How are you, Penny? Oh, I'm doing great, Joe. So glad to be here today. Welcome back. Uh, in about 15 minutes, we're going to have Patricia Duke joining us from Love, Inc., doing great things in the community. Um, and we got some music and all kinds of things for you coming up over the next hour or so. Um, our newscast, uh, we have a new newscast that's going to be airing this week, and the lead story on our newscast is the State of the Township Address. Uh, it happened to fall on uh, May 4th, which for Star Wars fans, May 4th is known as Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. So uh, the State of the Township Address had a Star Wars theme with costume characters and all sorts of stuff. Uh, looked like it was a lot of fun. I assume you were there and enjoyed it? It was wonderful, yeah. It was very well attended. Everyone had a great time, a lot of laughs, and a lot of great information. It took place at uh, Woodside Bible Church, and they do a great job over there. Um, they did an amazing light display on stage, and uh, they recorded the event, and you're going to be able to watch it here on ON TV, and you could watch it on uh, YouTube. Um, lots of things uh, have happened over the past year since the last State of the Township Address. Um, probably the biggest thing that uh, the Township Supervisor focused on was GM's investment in the GM Orient Assembly Plan and the impact that it's going to have on this community. Um, what, what do you feel is going to be the impact of, of GM's investment in Orient Township? Jobs. I think that's so important. And the commerce. It's really going to be beneficial to every business in the community and the surrounding community as well. And it will benefit our school districts, both Pontiac and Lake Orion. Many people don't know, but there's two school districts that are serviced by those General Motors properties. Mm, wow. Yeah, so that's just going to be huge and it's going to have a huge ripple of, uh, effect on the community. And uh, it's really exciting to see. Um, the other thing that he touched on, of course, one of the big stories from the past year was the construction of uh, the new municipal uh, complex. Uh, we were just there last week. Uh, the township is hiring, right? You want to elaborate on that? If, if you're looking for work, if you're looking uh, to work with the township, they're hiring right now. So we were over there last week uh, interviewing some staff people about how great it is to work really uh, for is. Orion Township. So um, talk about that, uh, about uh, the township hiring right now. So it's pretty exciting to work for Orion Township. I've been there 32 years and I love it. I started in an entry level position and many of the positions that we have available right now are entry level. So a person can start, say for an example, in the assessing department or in the water and sewer department or the building department or you can also go to where all the action is, is to our parks and recreation. Mm. But many of those positions also are not entry level. They would also pay a premium rate like the water and sewer department. So we love it when new recruits come in, they are fully trained, they are equipped with all the information and all the resources that they need to be successful with the township and it's a really great group of people working together to serve the community. Yeah, and one thing we talked about last week is that even if you come in on board with the township, you don't necessarily have to be an expert in whatever field you're pursuing. The township provides additional educational opportunities and training on the job. You want to elaborate on that? So for an example, if you're going to work in the assessor's office, your role might be to greet the people who come in with their property transfer affidavits or their homestead exemption forms or collecting new data about where to send any future tax bills. So we will equip and train that role and also there's opportunity to be certified through the state tax commission and we'll help people become certified in the areas where they're going to be the experts in that particular department. So example for the clerk's office, I just hired a new administrative assistant, election coordinator, and I'll help assist train, but also the State Bureau of Elections will help with the training, the qualified voter record files will help with the training. It's just a great opportunity to sow into the people that are working so hard to serve the community. Yeah, and it's such a, an amazing work environment, especially when you compare it to the previous building. Someone said to me a week or so ago, oh, I'm kind of sad they're tearing down the old building and I'm like really for those who worked yeah. in that building it wasn't the best environment to work in uh, they did their best with what they had to work with mm -hmm. but uh, that building is going to get leveled right I don't I don't know if they've started the actual um, demolition of it but it sounds like there's some exciting things planned for the property yes. that the old township hall sits on 
Yes, um, it's going to be a wonderful addition to our park system. Mm -hmm. Aaron Watley um, has really been listening to the residents and finding out what people have need of. There'll be additional fields for sports and athletics and people to be able to use that and the kids. I think that's really uh, the best thing that we can do is give those kids a place to play, a safe place to play. And so it'll be restored um, to, uh, you know, lawn, grass, fields. You won't see that big old outdated building there any longer yeah so it's exciting to see the changes that are happening and mm -hmm. like i said as far as the work environment goes in the new complex i was there on friday and yeah. i just happened to stumble onto a taco bar that was awesome wow what luck yeah. and they invited me to join uh the taco bar so you said uh what is it once a month or so you have a potluck in the uh in the break room there yeah so chris barnett thought it would be great to help build community within the workforce and he instituted a first Friday potluck so we do this every month and different departments will sponsor the potluck we send out a sign up sheet and everybody will bring their favorites to add to the meal so when you were there there was this amazing fiesta bar it was <laughs> amazing Joe ate and joined in the celebration <laughs> I went back twice it was so good we have desserts and tacos stuff and nachos soups Julia Steimel makes an amazing <laughs> soup and that was awesome so it's just fun it's a good way for us to all get together and enjoy each other's cooking yeah it, it, and like I said it's such a great environment and everybody was just happy and friendly and chatty and uh, Chris Barnett came over and joined me at my table and I said if you have any extra office space I wouldn't mind yeah. having an office here at some point uh, that. <laughs> <I know. laughs> but yeah that, that new facility if you haven't seen it uh, get down there it's, it's just a really amazing open space like all the employees are able to interact they're not divided by walls or anything and uh, it's just a very uh, open and uh, it, what's the word I'm looking for? Inviting atmosphere. It's uh, they've done some really great things at that new facility. Yes, I love it. Mm -hmm. And the floors are just really. It's, it has almost an industrial look to it in places. But I want to get a scooter because you go from one end of the building to the other. <laughs> you could get there pretty quick on the one of those little mini scooters. But the floors are concrete. Yeah. Right. So it would be really nice to be able to get around. But it it's spacious. We did need some space. Most definitely, um, we were pretty piled on top of each other and as you said the building was outdated that we were in and we mm. just didn't have room to serve the community properly yeah yeah so go visit if you get yeah. a chance um, one thing that happened uh, over this past weekend, uh, did you get a chance to watch the Kentucky Derby at all? A little bit of it, not much. <laughs> um, there were cute little hometown things happening, people in their backyards and mm -hmm. having their own little races, and my granddaughter came in second, so <laughs> her horse did, but it was just fun. Uh, I didn't see any of the events locally, but from a family perspective, we enjoyed that. Yeah, our family does a pool every year, and uh, we all draw the horses' names out of a bowl, and we we do a pool. And uh, the very last name to come out of the bowl, my brother-in-law got, and it, at the time, uh, as of Friday night, the odds on this horse was 99 to 1. Ooh. Of course, that was Rich Strike. And I mocked him and I laughed at him. I'm like, ha, you got the 99 to one odds horse. The next day it had improved to 80 to one, which isn't much of an improvement. And from what I heard, he was a last second replacement for a horse that had been scratched from the race. Hmm. So imagine this 80 to one long shot comes in as a last second replacement. The video, the replay of how he went from the back of the pack to cross the finish line first is chilling. Like, it gives you goosebumps when you see it. And so my brother-in-law, who had that horse, <laughs> we were at my niece's graduation. She graduated from MSU this past weekend. Exciting. So we didn't get to actually watch the race. But my brother-in-law looked at his phone. He goes, I think my horse just won. Oh. And I'm like, no, that's impossible. Couldn't it was happen. an 80 to 1 long shot. But sure and it's enough. Rich it was, Strike. Rich what a name. Strike was, yeah, th if that's <laughs> not a tip, you know, a little sign that maybe you should have yeah. put some money on Rich Strike. But that sounds like a good plan. Yeah. It reminds me a few years ago we we did the Kentucky Derby poll 
And uh, I wasn't able to draw my own horse, so my niece drew the horse for me, and it was a 50 to one long shot. And uh, that horse was named Mine That Bird. Okay. And I figure, well, I might as well throw $5 on him too. So I put $5 on Mine That Bird, and he won that Kentucky Derby that year. So I did pretty well that That's year. That's really cool. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. And then later that evening, to kind of keep that theme going, the Lions Club had their lion races. Oh, that's a great event. And so if you're not familiar with the lion mm -hmm. races, they uh, there's businesses and community groups in the, in, in the area that uh, will purchase a wooden lion. I don't know if ours has gotten back here yet, um, but they get each business has a wooden lion. They decorate it, they paint it, and then the Lions Club lines them up six at a time, rolls large fuzzy dice, that advance the uh, lions forward and uh, everyone in attendance, so who, they get dinner and they do raffles and they bet on these lions to cross the finish line first and money can be won. Uh, and that's a, a really fun event too. It's a great fundraiser for the lions. Yeah, and they have mm -hmm. lots of other things coming up this year. The Jubilee is just uh, a month or so away. At the end of June is their Jubilee. That's the largest lions fundraiser of the year and long oh, time like Orient yeah. tradition. So, so well attended. People yeah. love it. They wait for it. Yeah. Um, and so let's move on to our first uh, roll-in segment. Uh, we recently had representatives of um, the uh, Memorial Day uh, or the, the Veterans Memorial. That was beautiful. Uh, who came into our studio recently to promote what's going to be happening on Memorial Day uh, here in Lake Orion at our beautiful Veterans uh, Memorial. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's take a look at this video clip now. There's another event that's coming up, I heard. The Memorial Day Ceremony. Mer right? Memorial Day Ceremony. It's going to be on May 30th at 1.30 in the afternoon. And at that, we'll have keynote speakers. And uh, Memorial Day is, <coughs> excuse me, is different than the um, Veterans Day. Veterans Day, we are honoring all veterans. On Memorial Day, we're remembering those that gave their life for this country. And uh, at the Lake Orion Memorial, we have, oh, I think we go back to the First World War, or, or earlier. Civil War. Civil War. Civil War veterans are buried, mm -hmm. or not buried there, but have bricks there, or memorized on plaques there. And we try to get everybody who had passed since Civil War till now uh, on, on our plaques in the, in the center of the memorial. It's a very beautiful place, and people go there to remember their loved ones who fought for our country. Um, we have freedom because of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very. The uh, area that they're in uh, is called the Pathway to Peace. We're looking for that ever elusive pa peace in the world, so we named it Pathway to Peace. That's very fitting, yeah. Dr. Joe. And we have hundreds of engraved bricks with their names on it. Can people still purchase bricks for their loved ones? Oh, absolutely. We have three sizes, one four by eight, which goes for 125, uh, eight by eight, which goes for 250, and a big one, 16 inches by 16 inches with engraving for $1,000. That's such a wonderful way to honor loved ones and also some support the Veterans Memorial. Yeah. And of course that money goes towards the preservation of the memorial itself, which it seems like we're, we're always coming up with wonderful ideas which cost money and we reach out to our supporters for donations. That's fantastic. You wanted to add something as well, Charles? Yeah, because a key point is, is through donations it keeps the memorial running. It doesn't mm -hmm. get any federal or state support or even local. That mm -hmm. uh, Everything there is from our community, donating. And the bricks are one way we can put the donations in. And people put bricks in, they're not necessarily from Lake Orion. They could be from anywhere in the state of Michigan. You have a veteran in your family, you want to honor them instead of going over, say, they live, they were buried out in Jackson. They, you could turn around, put a brick there, and there's a place locally you could visit and do that. I know I have my father-in-law, he's from uh, Redford, Michigan. 
and we have a nice size brick there for him after That's his beautiful. passing. Yep. Should we visit the website, the Veterans Memorial website? Oh, yeah. yes. And we'll find out more information about that opportunity to be a part of the brick program? Right. Okay. And, well, it is right now. If you go to orientveteransmemorial.com, you can, you can uh, select what you want. There. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's so important that everyone come together in the community and honor our veterans in this way. Yes, yes. yes. I well, heard there's going to be a run also. Oh, yes. Let's talk about that. Well, there's going to be two runs. Oh. One's a 5K and the other is a five mile. Oh, my goodness. And uh, thanks to uh, our supervisor, Chris Barnett, mm -hmm. he has worked very diligently about that run. And uh, it's a good money maker for the preservation of the memorial also. And do you have to run or can you walk or push somebody in a stroller? You don't have to run. Okay. You can, we've, had, we've had a combination of all of the above. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Not, not only walkers, but it's also across all age groups also. So mm -hmm. it's not just limited to a small group of people, it's open to the whole community. And welcome back to Orient Today. Uh, for me, Memorial Day is never a day off from work. There's so many things going on that day. Uh, I'll be there with our video cameras covering the ceremony and the 5K. And there's talk of the parade returning this year. So uh, it's going to be a full day of activities here in Lake Orient. It's so going to be awesome, Joe. Thanks yeah. for recording everything for us. I try. You're our historian. The, exactly. I'm yes. proud to be that. That's yes. awesome. Uh, all right, joining us now is Patricia Duke from Love, Inc., uh, an organization that does great things in, in this community. Um, Patricia, give us, uh, in a nutshell, a little history of Love, Inc. Yep, so um, we are Love in the Name of Christ of North Oakland County. We have been around locally since 2007. Um, nationally, we've been around for 42 years. Wow. And as I said, our mission is to, to help um, mobilize churches to help folks who are in need and sort of get them out of where they are and show them a different way. So in a way, you kind of help network uh, local churches and things like that to sort of work together and support those in need? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah that's great. So how do you do this? How, where does the funding come from? Um, so we are strictly funded by donations, so from all of our local partner churches and from folks in the community. So you have one coming up uh, soon, uh, Wojo's. Talk yes. about that. Yep, um, they're very generous. They do um, many fundraisers for lots of organizations throughout the year, and they are doing um, two of them for us, May 26th and um, June 4th. So if you go to shop at Wojo's, just tell them that you're there to support Love, Inc., and 10% of your purchases go back towards us. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. So you also have a clothes closet and you're gonna be uh, announcing a new location. What's yes. the closed closet all, all about? How can someone access that service? Yeah, so when we have folks um, who call us and they might you know, have a need financial or otherwise, we um, set them up with our ministries. So um, if they wanna shop at our closed closet, they you know, don't have to shop for themselves and spend that money there. They can use it for some of the bills that they need to pay. And so we also have them um, shop at our Bed Blessings and Beyond ministry. Mm -hmm. But um, what we had to do was we had to um, pause the closed closet at St. Mary's in the Hills, and we're very excited to be opening it at Oxford Free Methodist Church in August. Oh, that's we're Very fantastic. excited, yes. That's great. And so how do you keep the closed closet stocked? Donations from the community. So everyone in Oxford, Lake Orion, everyone has been generous over many years, and um, that's what we do. We do clothing drives and also drives for our bed blessings and beyond for household goods as well. So lots of community support. That's what keeps us going. Any age, Patricia, with clothes that you particularly need? Every single age. So we're going to be completely restocking the shelves at the, at the new location. So we're going to be starting completely fresh. So we do infant up until adult. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the clothing drive, do you announce certain dates? Uh, how does that work? Yep, so um, we're planning on doing it um, right now tentatively in July to stock the closet in August. And so we're going to be doing things on a weekly basis, so more to come with that. We'll be sending out some stuff in um, the end of June to let folks know what we're going to be looking for to stock that closet. 
Is uh, that new location that you just mentioned in Oxford, is that the drop-off point? Where can people drop off clothing items? Yep, we're going to have it all. In, like, it'll be a one-stop shop, so it'll all be at Oxford Free Methodist Church. We just have to figure out the logistics because it's brand new for them and for us at that location. But it'll be a drop-off, and that's where the closet will be located. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, now I see here it says uh, you're announcing a transformational ministry class. What's that about? Yep, so we're very excited about that because we've always said that we don't want to just give folks a hand up we want or a hand out we want to give them a hand up and so this will be um, a financial literacy class that we're starting wow. yeah, with the target date in September and it's all about us moving more into relationships with folks so that we can move alongside them to show them a different way so they can be more self-sustaining you know that's great because I was just talking to someone recently that in high school I didn't I don't feel like I was adequately prepared mm -hmm. to do my own taxes yep. and stuff yep. like that. Are, is that the type of thing that you might touch on? Absolutely. That. So we're planning on doing probably a first six-week class and then a second six-week class. So we'll do some of the basics, you know, with banking and budgeting and then, you know, setting stuff up, maybe a checking and a savings account. But we certainly plan to move on to other things like taxes and investments, but it'll, that'll be further down the road. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's we're very excited service. about it because then we'll really be able to you know meet with our folks where they are and what we're also going to be doing is we were doing our intakes when we found out about folks we were doing that over the phone and now we get to do that in person so we'll really oh, you know get to like start that relationship with folks because it's mm -hmm. nice to be able to do over the phone but you really start to build and are able to mentor when you you know see folks face to face we're really excited about that that's great are yeah. you bringing in some speakers or maybe local businesses to help share that information um, um, that'll be it's it's all in its infancy so yeah, we yeah. would certainly love to have you know partners with businesses um, in the area we are working with um, Capricor right now Regina um, in Lake Orion to help us figure out you know what those classes need to look like for that financial literacy so we're excited about that yeah, yeah. that's great now um, I vote in Oxford I live right on the uh, border of Orion and Oxford and my precinct is a little church over there in Oxford you're familiar with that church, aren't you? I think you mean Lake Point Community That's Church. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I vote there too. Uh, yes. And so your offices are there. They uh, are. Are you are. looking for new space? We are praying that God brings us a large building that we can house all of our ministries in. So we would love to have our clothes closet, our bed blessings and beyond ministry. Mm -hmm. And then since we're starting to see folks in person, you know, office space for that to happen. So wherever it's going to come from. We've, we've put it out there in the community, so we're just gonna wait and see when it happens. But we are so grateful for Lake Point Community Church for housing our offices there, because we couldn't do it without them. Yeah, do you uh, have any leads at all uh, yet, or? Maybe, uh, Maybe someone watching this show uh, She's might not have giving it up yet. <laughs> if anyone would be willing to donate at least a minimum, and I said donate, please, as a tax write-off, $5,000. $5,000. Well, we would like that as well, but on 5,000 square feet, we could probably squeeze into that for sure. All right. And it's a tax write-off. It is. That's what I mentioned. Yeah, yes, that's a bonus. A tax, absolutely. I just yeah. got to go back to Lake Point Church. Sure. Yes. They are so outward-focused. What an incredible group of people there. Yeah. Absolutely. All the ministry work yes. that they do, it's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So what is, what's the size of your staff and, and how, how many volunteers do you deal with? How, how is that structured? So um, right now we have myself, um, one other, two, two and a half other people. We actually have another position that we need to fill. So it's mm -hmm. myself, the director, our um, coordinator, our transformational ministry coordinator, and we are looking for a donor development coordinator. So mm -hmm. someone to help us raise money and build relationships with donors. So two and a three and a half, <laughs> we're always looking to grow. So we probably have about 40 volunteers. Oh wow. And so we couldn't do what we do without them for sure. What, what are your expectations of a volunteer? What time of time, or what kind of time commitment and, and what are their duties? So um, we have lots of different opportunities for volunteers. It could be as little as four hours a week. Um, we look for volunteers to answer the phones as receptionists. Um, we need volunteers who are intake workers who would sit for folks for about an hour to, to get their story. We have um, a need for folks in the clothes closet and bed blessings and beyond. That could be about three hours a week. We're going to need some mentors once our classes start and some folks who might be interested in teaching those financial classes. Mm -hmm. So lots of different opportunities. Just, 
you know, I like to sow those seeds and see whatever sounds good for the, the folks who hear about the opportunities. Great. I know over the, the past two years, this pandemic that hopefully we're emerging from uh, has had mm -hmm. a severe impact on fundraising efforts and local nonprofits. How were you impacted over the last two years by this pandemic? very significantly. Um, we get lots of our donations from um, the public and from churches, as I mentioned. We have, um, we're moving more, we're moving a little bit more away from fundraisers and kind of trying to ignite that passion in donors who really feel like, you know, what we do is great for the community, so that's what we're trying to focus on. But we've had a real severe impact on our donations through COVID. Did you find that your clients, what was, what was the people who needed your services uh, what did you witness during the pandemic? Was there more of a need for your services or did you hear from less people? Because at the Fish Food Pantry, their calls actually went down for a little while before they started going back up again. Did you experience something similar? We experienced the exact same thing. We work really closely with fish and so we sort of watch it go up and down and up and down. We were lucky enough to receive a grant from the United Way um, to help clients, but we ended up having to spend that all in a certain amount of time. So all that, that money for clients is gone. So we're looking wow. to um, segue into the next thing, and that's <laughs> the need for monthly donors. That's right. Because that really, I mean, that makes a difference for us, being able to engage those folks who feel passionate about what we do. And, um, you know, giving back financially is one of those ways that we ask folks to contribute if, if they feel the passion for what we do. How can people find out more information about this? Um, so loveincofnoc.org okay. or call us at 248-693-4357. Good. So are you looking for businesses to donate, individuals, are there tiers? We're looking for everyone to donate to their capacity, whatever, any, you know, we're looking for donors who would be um, even able to, you know, donate $10 a month because mm -hmm. any, any difference, you know, it makes a big difference. It'd be cool if those kids in their classrooms would participate. If a teacher would think this is a great way for us to yeah. have our kids engage in something, they could easily do a five dollar or a ten dollar a month as a whole. Absolutely. You know, a bunch of thirty or thirty <laughs> first graders or something. That yeah, would be maybe a neat bottle incentive. drive, coin yes. drive, something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I think yeah. those are great engage ideas. Engage everybody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, do you also provide meals to those who, who are in need? So we, um, it's under the umbrella of Love, Inc. We were able to bring that to the community and let them know that there was a need for folks to get together and have meals. And so we partner with um, four different churches, like Orient United Methodist Church does a meal on Monday. Um, Emmanuel Congregational Church in Oxford does a Tuesday meal. Uh, Lake Point Community Church does a Thursday meal. And then Oxford United Methodist Church does a Saturday morning meal. Hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Do you have to meet any requirements to take part in these meals, or what's what's asked of you when you arrive? Just to come hungry. <laughs> Just to come hungry. And, and what's kind of nice, you know, we have our volunteers going out to talk to people, and we're starting to re-engage our um, pastors and, you know, meeting with folks and just talking to them and seeing how they are, just being, you know, part of the community and inviting them in. That's fantastic. So yeah. even if you're just looking for companionship, you can come. It's not based on a need for income or food insecurities. It's just yep. anybody coming out. Yep, and that's that's the key there. It's the, the relationship building because that's what we want to do. Just, you know, meet folks where they are and, and help them move along their path. God bless those churches who are willing to do that once per week. What a gift. Yeah. It is a gift. Our partner churches are a tremendous gift, as are our volunteers and our employees mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. What can you say to people who are experiencing tough times and are embarrassed or, or they find it difficult to ask for help? I actually love that you asked that question because I love when I speak to people, it's just, you know, we have all been through difficult times yeah. and we all have something to share and we all needed just that one person just to have that, you know, ear to listen to them and there's nothing to be embarrassed about because we have all experienced need in one way or another our entire lives, everybody. Sure, definitely. So we just, That's you know, true. we want to be an ear for folks. That's for great. Sure. So as we wrap this segment up, once again, repeat how someone can get a hold of Love, Inc. Yep, so um, they can check us out at our website at um, loveincofnoc.org or call us 248-693-4357. All right. Once again, you're, you're doing fantastic work in the community. We appreciate it, and I'm sure the, the community appreciates it. Thank you. We love what we do. We love to help. Great. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, 
spring has sprung. The weather is nice, and we're going to start seeing live entertainment throughout the Lake Orion community. Uh, the Wildwood concerts are right around the corner. And a little bit later in the summer, uh, the gazebo concerts Can't in wait. the village are going to be starting. I already have it in my calendar, the first Friday in July, which would be 4th of July weekend. Uh, the very first gazebo concert in Children's Park is scheduled to take place. Um, I go down there to record those on occasion. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, that doesn't feel like work for me. You're outside, it's beautiful, there are families, there's the park, the playscape, and you've got these Food acts. is nearby. Exactly, yes. lots of places lots to of eat and shop mm -hmm. and have fun. Um, so we're really looking forward to those gazebo concerts uh, to get started. Um, and so here's a little look at uh, a recent concert over the past year or so um, that shows you what the atmosphere is like uh, at uh, the gazebo in Children's Park.
So that uh, is the Gazebo Concert Series. Uh, what they call it? LO Live is the name of the series out there. Um, the first one's going to be the first Friday in July. And then every week on Wednesdays, there'll be live music in the park. And then the first Friday of each month. So um, great opportunity to get out there with the family. Uh, cookies and cream, ice cream is right yes. around. It's like within walking distance. So, good. so you can get some ice cream, sit in the park. Really great night out mm -hmm. for the uh, family. It's yeah. so wonderful to live in this community. Yeah, there's a lot going on, lots of opportunities. Um, you sing a little bit, don't you? Have you ever sung like in front of a crowd? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> I, I love to sing. It'd be a lonely world without music. <laughs> so I'm part of the praise team at our church, oh, Auburn nice. Hills Christian Center, and I love that. But I also sang some karaoke too. That's a lot of fun, too. I'll sing anywhere. I'm not ashamed. I'll just get it out there and get other people to sing with me. Yeah. What do you like to sing? Uh, I uh, used to do karaoke with friends. I remember uh, BW3s uh, used to have karaoke, and there were some other places in Lake Orion that had karaoke. And I would get up there with friends, and uh, I would sing Elvis or Johnny Cash or something like that. The funny thing is, is I, you know, I used to think I was up there just killing it. And then we started doing a karaoke program here at Owen TV, and we would record it and play it back. And mm -hmm. then some of my song choices I would watch and go, oh, I wasn't as good as I thought I was. <laughs> so I have a very narrow range that I try to stay within. So I bet you sing Johnny Cash very well. What was one of your favorites? My, one of my favorite Johnny Cash songs is uh, Sunday Morning Coming Down, oh. I think is the name of the song, you know, yes. woke up Sunday morning. Uh, that was a fun one to sing, and that's one of my favorite Johnny Cash songs. I love that. I think we need to go karaoke. <laughs> Who's doing that anymore? Do you know? I don't know. If anyone knows of any karaoke uh, opportunities in Lake Orion, you let, gotta us, let know. us know. I know that 20 Front Street has an open mic night where mm -hmm. they invite me musicians and performers to come in and perform in front of a live audience at 20 Front Street. Um, and I sure would love to bring karaoke back here at Owen TV. Um, I kind of miss it a little bit. We haven't done it in a few years. You drew a good crowd with that. It was a, a good crowd and there's a lot of talent. Yes. Uh, it, it's pretty surprising when someone would get up and just belt out a song yeah. and you're like, whoa, they're actually pretty good. I have family members <laughs> who sing very well. Yeah. Um, oh man, there's so much talent that we don't realize, but we can get people with just a couple notes to sing along <laughs> with us. I remember one time at my previous job, I went to a conference. I can't remember what city it was in. It might have been Cincinnati or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, after our big uh, award ceremony, we found out they were having karaoke in the hotel. And so I was sitting with coworkers uh, just after I had been hired. So they didn't know me all that well. And without them knowing, I put my name in for a song and they called my name and my coworkers seemed surprised. They were like, you're going up there? And I said, yeah. Yes. And so I went up there and I did an Elvis song and the place erupted and it was just oh, so much fun. Yes. And I come back to the table and everyone's like, well, we just learned something new about you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, was, that was fun. Do you remember awesome. the biggest reaction you got from uh, doing a karaoke song? Like, do you have a, a go-to song that you go to? Well, I love anything Kathy Matea. That's my favorite, but my two sisters, so there's three of us, Patty, Penny, and Pam, we sing The Rose, Bette Midler, oh, yeah. for our mom. Wow. And her reaction every time when we're singing that, um, whether it's at a family gathering or karaoke, if we all happen to be out <laughs> like that, um, is beautiful. And it's priceless to watch her. She almost always tears up. Do you do the harmony and all oh, that yeah. stuff? Oh, wow. Yes, yeah. We That's grew awesome. up singing. We sang in the choir at church when we were little girls. Yeah. And my grandma always had us singing. And my mom always liked to, you know, give it a... Uh, she always tells us, hey, will you sing this for me? And we'll work on it. <laughs> but the sister with the most beautiful voice is my eldest sister, Patty. Yeah. Oh, she sings so beautifully. Does she sing professionally or anything? Um, or? No, at her church she does. Wow. Um, but she could. She's a bus driver for Lake Orion Community Schools. Yeah. And I imagine she sings to those kids on the bus sometimes. <laughs> She's in dispatch. We'll have to get her here in the studio, yeah. record her here in the yeah. studio. Patty's That'd be amazing. Awesome. <laughs> That's great.
Um, so yeah, lots of concerts, lots of opportunities this summer to uh, see live music here in Lake Orion. I think last year there were over a hundred different performances at Wildwood, the Gazebo, 20 Front Street, uh, all over the place. So lots of opportunities to get out there. You know, one thing I missed over the last couple of years was seeing live music. Yes. Um, and uh, I went to a, a concert in November in Ferndale. And when I was in LA recently, I went to a concert at a historic venue called the Troubadour. And I realized oh. how much I missed being in that environment and seeing live music, it's always a lot of fun. It sure is. 20 Front Street is leading the charge for live music. That's right. Oh, amazing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, with uh, the arrival of warm weather, uh, there's sports going on all over the place. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, there's a high school softball game going to be uh, going on tonight at around 4.30. Uh, there's soccer. There's all sorts of sports going on. Uh, so here with a recap of uh, recent uh, sports results is uh, ONTV's Joey Tysick. Take it away, Joey. Hello, and welcome back to Lake Orion Sports Update. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and today we have highlights from softball, boys varsity lacrosse, girls varsity soccer, track, and more. We are just about We are just about halfway through the season as many games have been rescheduled or moved around, so the calendar has gotten a little bit busy. As always, the Dragons varsity softball team is one to look out for when talking about the better teams in the state of Michigan. They tend to find themselves in a lot of tough tournaments throughout their season as well. The Dragons have now started OAA league play and have rattled off nine straight wins. They gained most of the momentum off of a doubleheader against Rochester, where they mercied the Falcons both games. These were much-needed wins after a tough outing in the three games played at Bailey Park. In this stretch, they have also put up an insane 14-run average over that streak, and while also winning the Petoskey Tournament just this past weekend. The Dragons will also be able to possibly keep up that momentum as they have five straight home games with just an upcoming tournament in Owasso being the only game played away in the next two weeks. We will have more coverage of these games as the season goes on. The Lake Orion girls varsity soccer team is having a solid season and are looking to keep improving as we are headed towards playoffs. They've had a great success of keeping it close in games, even in losses. Only one of their six losses has been by more than one goal. Their goaltending and defense has been outstanding all season. On April 14th, the Dragons faced off against Utica Eisenhower at LOHS and winds were gusting at 30 miles per hour at times. The game started slow as both teams were trying to figure out how to play in such crazy conditions. But as they settled in, the Dragons were able to create a lot of opportunities for themselves as they were able to get the ball to the corners and enable perfect cross play. They would end up taking the win 4-2. Then, on April 21st, they were home once again and faced off against Troy Athens. It was a slower paced game, but both teams were able to get some shots off. Lake Orion seemed to struggle at getting some of the easy setups they normally get, but Athens played good keep away. Athens would win the game off of the lone goal in the middle of the second half, 1-0. After that tough loss, Lake Orion would then rattle off back-to-back -back wins against Bad Axe and St. Clair. On April 29th, Summit Academy would come into town to take on the Dragons. From the get-go, the Dragons would take control as it seemed like they were on the attack all night long. They once again had plenty of great setups, long shots, and even a couple of headers. Everyone was on the same page, and it turned into an offensive juggernaut for the Dragons. They would end up with six goals on the night and hold Summit Academy to zero goals. The Dragons' offense has slowed down a bit the last couple of games, as they would tie twice and then lose twice. The Dragons' record now sits at 6-6-3, six, six, and three, and if they can just get back on track offensively, their defense should be able to keep them in most games. Can't wait to see how this team closes out their season with only a few weeks remaining. The Lake Orion Dragons varsity boys lacrosse team is known for being one of the better teams around and always plays in a lot of big games early on in the season. This season was no different, as after they dropped their first game to Hazlitt, they then went on to beat Orchard Lake St. Mary's, Birmingham United, Romeo, and Bloomfield Hills. 
After that, they played some of the best of the best, where they lost to Rockford 6-7 to in overtime, and then Detroit Country Day got the best of them, where the Dragons lost 4-18. to On May 5th, the Dragons hosted Rochester Adams, an OAA Classic, and this became an instant all-time classic game. Lake Orion would get on the board early with a goal from Luke Gannon in the first four minutes, but then Rico Hart would take over for the Highlanders. He made a nice wraparound goal just a minute after the Dragons score. Hart would then get another fantastic goal with four minutes left in the first quarter. And then again, a minute later, Hart would once again score, giving himself a hat trick in the first quarter. In the middle of the second quarter, the Highlanders would cool down just slightly as they found another goal, and this time from Joey Shallow. With three minutes left in the half, Ben Brett would give the Highlanders a 5-1 lead on the Dragons. Lake Orion was able to get a last-minute goal from Sam Haynes with just 14 seconds left in the half, giving them a little momentum. It just seemed like the Dragons were letting too many easy setups for the Highlanders, and the Dragons knew they needed to make some adjustments coming out of halftime. Fortunately, they were able to get something going. With a minute into the third, Brady Drury scored their third goal, bringing them within two. The big thing for the Dragons in the second half was their ball control. They started getting stops and were able to chip away at the lead. Late in the third, Sam Haynes would get another goal to bring Lake Orion right back in it. Just a minute later, Adams Shallow would get his second goal to put Adams back up by two, making the Dragons work for this comeback. Both teams started to lock in during the fourth. As you could see, neither team took as many chances. Sam Haynes would earn his hat trick for the Dragons after a few minutes into the fourth, getting them back to a one-score game. And finally, the Dragons were able to tie the game up at six after a fantastic goal from Cross Papadellis. With just 35 seconds left in the game, the Dragons were able to take the lead back for the first time since early in the first quarter, when Jackson Vasquez beat three Adams defenders to score the goal. The Dragons were 35 seconds away from the incredible comeback. Adams was able to win the faceoff and get it to Rico Hart, who was held scoreless after his early hat trick, but somehow, through a triple team, was able to score from 10 yards out, tying the game with four seconds left on the clock, forcing the game to overtime. Then in overtime, Lake Orion would win the faceoff and immediately call a timeout to get some setup. Coming out of the timeout, they would move the ball around a lot and would take up a whole minute and a half to when they finally put a shot on goal and made it count. The ball went in the net from a cross Papadella shot to win the game 8-7 to for the Dragons. It truly was one of the best games I've seen, and it was fun from both sides. This should be a nice momentum swing for the Dragons as they approach the final games of their season. For past episodes of the Sports Update, head on over to orionontv.org and click the ONTV demand link. There you will find all of the ONTV's community programming, news, sports, concerts, and government meetings. You can also watch us on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV, all in HD. Just add the Cablecast channel to your lineup to enjoy local programming at its best. For even more Lake Orient sports, check out our YouTube channel for our full game coverage. Visit YouTube.com and search for Orion Neighborhood Television. Also, make sure to catch all of our replays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m., along with Saturdays at 1 p.m. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Joey. Great job. And I feel like we should also congratulate the men's varsity track team for winning the OAA Red regular season title. Uh, they defeated Rochester Adams by just six points. This caps a perfect 4-0 dual meet season for the Dragons. Uh, the Dragons men also won the Oxford Invitational and placed third at the very competitive New Balance Invitational. The Dragon men are the favorites to win the OAA Red White League Championship meet on Friday the 13th, this upcoming Friday. Congratulations to head coach Stan Ford for another league title. He had an amazing career with LOHS and only lost one OAA Red Duel meet in the past 10 years. That's amazing. This is his final season coaching the men's and women's track teams. So congratulations to Coach Ford. Uh, speaking of sports, we have a kind of a fun event coming up. Uh, the Orient Township Kickball Tournament. They've invited uh, other municipalities and businesses to form a team, and they're going to be competing at Miracle League Field uh, just a few weeks away. On a Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, they're hoping a lot of people come out. Um, Supervisor Chris Barnett and Jenny Boddy have been going to town getting things ready. I saw them today with some of the kickballs. 
doing a little promo. So yeah. everybody's really excited about this. That's going to be fun. I'll be there with our camera. Um, also, something else that's right around the corner is the uh, Flower and Art Fair, which is going to be taking place in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, this year it's organized by the Orion Art Center. That was a DDA event, and I think the last two years it's been an Art Center event. So the streets of downtown Lake Orion will be closed so you can shop for flowers and home improvement items and art and all sorts of things. Uh, there's also going to be an art exhibit at the Art Center that weekend. And something I just learned about just recently, on the Saturday of the Flower Fair, you'll be able to take a historic tour of some businesses and buildings in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, it's been organized by the Orion Historical Society uh, and where living is a vacation, which is a social media uh, product uh, created by Jimmy Johnson. Uh, I got to meet uh, a couple of people who are responsible for putting on this historic tour. And uh, let's give you a little sneak peek of what you can expect. Orion Art Center's Flower and Art Fair will take place on Friday, May 20th through Sunday, May 22nd. In addition to art, music, and food, you can also take part in a guided historical tour of several businesses in downtown Lake Orion. The Orion Historical Society has partnered with Where Living is a Vacation and the DDA to place signage on several buildings that have historical significance. The project is known as A Moment in Time. Uh, this started as a passion project between uh, the Orient Historical Society with Sharon and with Where Living's Vacation. So it um, started out as, hey, during the pandemic, we need like a good project that we can work on, uh, that we can all sink our teeth in and do some research. And a uh, sign project for uh, downtown was one that we all voted on. When like, people come for the tour, they'll be able to kind of look at the signs that we have put up and be able to kind of envision what the area looked like back in, at the turn of the century. And I like to think about people coming and from, you know, Detroit and Flint on the trains, on the, the DUR, and just being tourists here, and this when this was a resort town. I think that kind of makes Lake Orion really unique among all the other communities. The signs will be permanent and the Historical Society is hoping to add more in the future. A QR code will take you to the Lake Orion DDA's website where you can read about the history of the building and see photos from the past century. Uh, the challenge is narrowing down what to keep and what to put on a QR code for the website. So uh, there's just so much history here that you have to pick and choose what would be the best thing for the building that we're representing. Um, and the spans of the photo. Uh, so that was the challenge, was uh, picking the right photos and picking the right content because, there's, like I said, there's so much content, so many things to choose from. We would like people to really appreciate and be able to look at how the downtown looks now and what a nice, vibrant place it was and kind of think about how it was back in the day when it was just kind of growing and developing and it's you know, kind of be able to pull people into the whole history of the place. A guided tour will kick off at 1 p.m. on Saturday, May 21st and participants will visit five different locations starting with Ed's Broadway Gift and Costume located at Flint and Broadway Streets. Maps will be available at the Flower and Art Fair and the tour is free to the public. So much history in downtown Lake Orion. I bet you there's residents who walk those streets mm -hmm. and have no idea what used to occupy those buildings. Uh, the comic book store located on Flint and Broadway, you see old photos where it was, a, I think, a Kroger, where you see fresh produce in the display in the window there. Um, the uh, Bean to Go used to be a bank, uh, and, and it was a restaurant called the Bank Vault Restaurant because they still had the bank's vault in the building. Um, so much history. And, you know, the city of Rochester, years ago, they developed a system where they would place signage by significant buildings and you'd walk up with your phone, scan the QR co code, and then a description of the building and its history would come up on your phone. And I always thought it would be a great idea to do that here mm -hmm. in downtown Lake Orion and they're finally getting around to it. That's beautiful. So there's going to be five locations uh, during the Flower and Art Fair. They're talking about adding two more locations. One is going to be at the auto parts place, which 
sits on the grounds that was the railroad uh, station. Um, and then they're going to put some uh, signage over it uh, at uh, Greens Park, which has an amazing history as well. And they're hoping that as downtown businesses see this and become aware of this program, they're going to say, well, can you do it for my building? And can you do it for my building? And hopefully you'll be able to walk around downtown Lake Orion and, and uh, scan the QR code with your phone and, and learn about the history of the, the village. Jimmy's really been instrumental in getting people engaged in this too. Yeah, yeah. What a the, history buff. The Historical Society has been sort of quiet over the past decade or so, and it's nice to see that they're active. They have meetings at the library in the James Ingram room over there once a month. So, uh, yeah, I want to see this Historical Society get active in the community again. Me too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's all kinds of events we keep promoting uh, on Orient today. Um, but here, in a nutshell, is a look at some of upcoming events that you can take part on this week's Quick Hits. Volunteers are still needed for this Saturday's Community Playground Build at Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. The new playground is made possible by an investment from the Lake Orion DDA. The build will begin at 7.30 in the morning. Sign up today at downtownlakeorion.org. On Saturday, the Orion Library will have Take and Make Zen garden packets available for pickup. Teens can pick up a Take and Make kit and make their very own tabletop Zen garden. All supplies will be available on a first come, first come basis starting at 9.30 in the library's lobby. Join the Wit Nature Center on Saturday for Nature Fit. Learn simple techniques for immediate stress relief. You'll learn five cutting edge techniques to bring presence into your everyday life aided by the beauty of nature. The program begins at two o'clock and is suitable for ages seven and up. The cost is $5 per person and pre-registration is required by calling 248-858-0916. The North Oakland Concert Band presents Promising Skies. The concert will take place this Sunday at Lake Orton High School beginning at 4 p.m. Come by for an afternoon of great music. There's still time to register for the Orient Township Dragon Dash. The 5K race will be held this Sunday at the Orient Center. Check-in begins at 7.30 and the race begins at 9. For more information, visit orientparks.com. Well, it looks like we're in for a beautiful week with summer-like temperatures. Tomorrow's forecast is calling for partly cloudy skies with a high of 76 and low 58. Partly cloudy again on Thursday with a high of 81 and low 57. Mostly sunny on Friday with a high of 81 and low 60. Scattered thunderstorms on Saturday with a high of 79 and low 58. And more scattered storms on Sunday with a high of 75 and low 53. Well, that's it for this week's ON TV Quick It. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Of course, I'll be there at some of those events with my video camera. I love covering the Dragon Dash on the Pollyann Trail. That begins and ends here at the Orient Center, and I'll be there for the playground build in Greens Park. Uh, they just recently did one, or that, that was in Greens Park. This upcoming one is in Children's Park. Um, so yeah, we got some new uh, playscapes for the kids to play on. Uh, one event that Becky neglected to mention that's coming up this weekend that I'll be at is the Motor City Comic Con returns to Novi this weekend uh, with comics and collectibles and celebrities. Oh, um, yes. I'm going to be able to chat with some celebrities celebrities. One I'm looking forward to meeting this weekend is Alicia Silverstone, who is in Clueless, and she was Batgirl in the Batman and Robin TV show, uh, or the movie, the movie with George Clooney in it. Um, so that's something I really look forward to is the Motor City Comic Con. Uh, they, they didn't do it for like two years in a row because of COVID, so um, they did have one in the fall, and but this is their first return to uh, the spring uh, Motor City Comic Con. So that's something I really look forward to. Oh, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. And get some great pictures for us. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I'll be there with my video camera, uh, hopefully interviewing some celebrities and, and uh, spending the weekend there in addition to all the other stuff that's going on. Um, you said something about planting seeds over at Orion Township. What's happening oh, there? Oh, yeah. Um, that was awesome. So today, starting at about 11 o'clock, Aaron Watley and his team put out um, some miracle Grow soil, little containers that will compost easily, all kinds of seeds. 
and we all planted seeds. We're going to watch them grow, water them, and take care of them. And those um, flowers, those beautiful blooms, you'll be able to see up the trails. Oh, so it fantastic. was just neat. They, they said that it's a great way for people to relax and relieve some stress and also to give back. Um, and we're just going to water them and watch them grow. That's so awesome. it's exciting. And then get them planted. We just recently hosted a Master Gardener video conference here at the studio, and they're nice enough to give the staff some little plants. So I have a, a cherry tomato plant that oh, I'm going to try good. and keep alive and hopefully get some cherry tomatoes off that. Those will so. be yummy. <laughs> exactly. Well, that pretty much wraps up uh, today's edition of Orion Today. You'll see us live here on ON TV every two weeks. And uh, on our next episode, we'll have music and news and sports and all kinds of things for you to enjoy. Uh, Penny, as always, a lot awesome. of fun. Great chatting with you. Uh, thanks to Patricia thanks, Duke uh, for joining us today. And we'll see you next time on Orion Today. Bye for now.